Hello everybody and welcome to today's video on the Scuff Radio channel. Today is going to be a topic that's been requested a few times now, which is a hardware tour of my repeater. So we're going to go through everything that is contained here on the tower site and we're going to talk about what each piece of hardware does and where I got it and what it costs and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to start with is just the tower as a whole. There's the top of the tower and then if we come down there's the trailer. It's actually a tower trailer made by a company called Aluma Tower and it is a fully aluminum trailer and tower. It cranks down and stows so you can tow it around wherever you want to go and then it's got a uh, enclosure built in onto it. I got this used. I paid about $2,400 for it and it was originally from a police department so that's why it says WF PSD on it. So, it's on jacks and it's on little uh, blocks as well that keep it up. And the trailer itself is not level, but the tower portion is level. And then for guying it down, if you saw the install video, we're just using these ground anchors that um, work pretty well. And then we've got the steel cable and the little spreader plate thing, turnbuckles, which actually I need to put some. Uh, safety wire through there so they don't unscrew and um, the rope itself is called Dyneema and apparently it's stronger than steel I don't know if I believe that or not but it's what the tower came with when I bought it so we're using it the tower is at about 60 feet or so it's advertised to be able to go up to 100 and as you can see a lot of the tower sections are still inside each other it's not telescoped out very much it can go a lot higher but we have it at 60 feet because that's what the guy wires are cut for. And it's been working so well at this height that I will eventually fully extend it all the way to full full height. But right now we're pretty happy with the performance at, uh, at 60 feet. The antenna at the top is a Hustler G7. Um, I'm not super happy with this antenna. The performance is fantastic. It performs really good. But the build quality on it is just not something that I'm super impressed by. You can tell by looking at it that it's not really straight. See how it kind of leans back a little bit? That's not my mounting bracket. The mounting bracket itself is just fine. Um, I'm using ComScope commercial antenna mount hardware. And that post it's on is straight. But the antenna itself actually has a little bit of a bend in it right here, as you can see. And that I did not do. That has been like that since I got it. The only part that I bent and then fixed was at the very, very top. And that's, of course, fixed now, so you can't even see that it was bent. But overall, the build quality on it is just not amazing. It's a collinear antenna, so it's got sections that screw into each other. I don't think it'll come apart or anything. It just feels cheap and feels flimsy. Um, we're running Messi and Poloni feed line. I believe it's the style that has about one decibel of loss on two meters uh, for a hundred foot and that's a uh, I think it's a hundred foot worth of feed line there. So we got about one dB of loss just in the feed line there and everything's got end connectors on it including the antenna and it's all wrapped up as well with uh, um, you can't really see it on camera but there is that uh, self-vulcanizing tape wrapped around the connections to keep them dry. Even though an end connector is waterproof, or watertight at least, that tape is an extra step in the process. So there's a setup. Um, we just have our own power pole as well, which was also part of the first install video. So let's get on to the hardware itself that runs this repeater. All right, so we'll start with like the most boring stuff first and then move on to the interesting stuff, I suppose. Uh, here are my duplexers. There are six cans here. They're very notch duplexers from Bird uh, TX, also known as TXRX. Here's the label. You can see it's been almost scratched off, but Bird Technologies TXRX Systems 283711F is the part on these. And they have about uh, 2.2 dB insertion loss on the receive and 2.1 on the TX. So with 50 watts out of the repeater, we're getting about 25-ish out of the duplexers. So actually that's more like 25 out to the antenna. It's close, it's 25, 24 watts to the antenna. 
Um, the antenna has 9.5 dB of gain on it, which is quite a lot, so it performs really, really well. Um, here's the connection for the hardline, or not hardline, but the Messi and Poloni going outside. Um, the harness in here, these jumpers, were actually custom made by somebody for me that um, are designed to work on the handband. It came with the, originally it came with the commercial style uh, cables, and while it did tune up, it had a lot of descents when running really high power. So these in here solved the descents issue. We're still not running the, uh, the high power amp right now for a couple of reasons, but we will in the future here. Um, we also have a battery backup in here, which is not currently in use because the thing's a piece of junk, and I'm looking for a, a rack mount solution of some kind to put in here. Uh, moving on here to the other cabinet, this is where all the good stuff is. It looks like kind of a mess, but it is a mess. Um, up top here we have a laptop which runs the controller interface for programming as well as programming the repeater. It has a webcam on the laptop, so I use that to watch this thermometer which tells me the inside cabinet and outside cabinet temperature. I've also got a radio here which is hooked up for monitoring and doing a few other things monitoring the input of the repeater for bozos and jammers. Um, and then we also have back here a signal link for the interface and a, it's from a brand that called um, Cudi, C-U-D-Y. It's a cellular router. So you plug in a SIM card and it creates a Wi-Fi network and it gives you ethernet ports to plug stuff into on. And that's what we're running for internet. It works really, really well and I couldn't be happier with it. The antennas have a lot of gain on them, they work pretty well. Signal out here is pretty good for uh, T-Mobile, which is what I've got on this thing. So I'm able to live stream video from here and audio and all that good stuff. Uh, we have our window unit for cooling. And then we'll move on now to the actual repeater. This is a Hytera brand. I can just get this stupid cable to cooperate and not be in the way. Come on now. This is a Hytera RD982IS. It's a 50 watt DMR and analog radio. So it can do either one, but we have it running in analog. Um, it has the display on it. You can see our frequency there. We're at high power. Um, there's our lights for everything. If I switch up here to it and transmit, you should be able to see them light up. Yep, there you go. Works pretty well. The repeater handles the identification, Morse code identifier. This repeater is a beast. Actually, has a ladybug on it. Not how there's ladybugs eating in here, but they are. This repeater is a beast. We ran this thing flat out, full power, continuous duty for, I think, an hour straight before one time, or maybe it was like 45 minutes to an hour. It was a really long time. Didn't care one bit. Uh, we don't have the amplifier on it. So it's just putting out 50 watts, but. This thing is a beast. It does not care how long you run it for, it will stay online. Compare that to a Bridgecom or some of the other cheaper brands, this thing will just blow them out of the water every single day of the week. The other thing that's a benefit of it is that it has better sensitivity. A lot of these people around here run Motorola gear from the 1980s, 1990s, older stuff that really can't compete with the sensitivity of this here. We have 0.25 microvolt sensitivity without a preamp. Whereas a lot of these other, uh, other Motorola stuff and uh, other repeaters have around 0.35 um, microvolts. So, I mean, it sounds like not a, not a bunch, but any advantage you can get is better performance. Any, any little difference in, in performance will help you. Uh, and the goal of this thing is to be, you know, maximum quality, you know, the best you can possibly get. So that's what we got there. That is a nice repeater. Um, I paid... A fairly good amount of money for it, but I also got a power supply with it, so that turned out pretty good. Um, underneath here, we have an RCOM RC210 repeater controller, and the reason that's there is for the linking of systems. So we have All-Star, uh, Zello, and Echolink, um, stuff all linked up in there. And there's actually a Raspberry Pi inside the cabinet here of the RCOM running the All-Star node. All the connections are made up here in the back. You see there we got a couple breakout boards and various things. That's all working pretty well. Underneath of it, we have the blue R1 2023 box. This is for the Zello interface. This thing was a little tricky to get working. 
So the wires on it that come out are designed for a Motorola CP1250 or something like that. And um, they don't work too well with the RCOM. So I actually have a relay in here, which uh, if I key it up, you should be able to see it light up. Yeah, there you go. That has to be in there to transform the output of the R1 over to something the RCOM can understand. So the R1 basically grounds one of the pins in order to go into transmit mode and the relay is a normally open relay that when it closes it actually supplies the RCOM with uh, plus three volts on the um, signal line so that it can actually function because without it you can transmit out of the R1 but you can't receive. The other thing that's annoying about the R1 is that the input on it, the microphone port, the line in or whatever you want to call it, rarely works on these. I know several people who have the same box and all have the same problem as me. That's why we have the Yesu radio up there monitoring because that one side of that radio is actually feeding the Broadcastify, um, the Archive, and the Zello audio feed. So it's a little annoying that we have to do that, but we get better audio quality because of it, so it's not all bad. Just keep in mind, if you're getting an R1, just know the input's probably going to be useless for the microphone side. <laughs> um, other things that we have in here, we have, uh, I already talked about it briefly, but we've got a little thermometer, and we have a camera. Uh, well, there's multiple cameras, but the one I will show on video is this one. This is pointed at the tower, so that I can watch the tower during a windstorm or a thunderstorm of some kind and just keep an eye on it. Um, so far I haven't had any reason to worry but uh, it's there in case I'm concerned because this is my first time dealing with a tower and uh, I don't know I just like keeping an eye on it. So there you go that's about it for the hardware. Uh, we really don't have much else in here right now. We used to have an amplifier in here. I have a Henry 600 watt repeater amp that will be going back in eventually. Uh, I have to get it tuned and diagnosed because it's got a bit of a thermal issue with it. So I'm going to be sending it back to Henry short, sooner or later and uh, having them take a look at it. Until then, we're just running the standard 50 watts out, 25 watts to the antenna, and performance has been really great. Uh, receive performance is really great as well. We have six cans, obviously, so that's, you know, that's really something on the receive side. But the repeater, man, it's a, it almost don't even care. It's, it's like it's not even the insertion loss is not even there. It's a little, little interesting how it all works. So, there you go. That's pretty much it for the uh, repeater tour. Um, a little bit more about this tower trailer. Uh, there's not much else to show. It's a crank up system. It does have an electric winch for raising and lowering the sections themselves, which is pretty nice. Other than that, this tower trailer is really, really good. Um, I mean can't really complain about it it does what it's supposed to do so that's going to about do it for the tour video on this here rapida hope you all enjoyed and learned something and uh, for all the people out there who want to put up a repeater one day this is how you do it right here if you don't want to be screwing around with repeater issues and sending your repeater back for maintenance or whatever don't get yourself an old motorola don't get yourself at a bridge com Get yourself a high Terra or a modern Motorola. And please, please do not put up a digital system. Digital sounds awful. Analog is the way to go. That'll about do it for my rant on that. <laughs> We're up here in uh, beautiful Lacey Springs, Alabama. Beautiful sky here. We're up at about uh, 1,280 feet above sea level. Tower's another 60 foot, so we're about 1,340-ish feet above sea level with this antenna. And performance is really, really good. Anyway, go ahead and end the video now. Just wanted to make this little tour video. Thanks for watching. Bye, 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 bye.